All right, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, webinar today. I'm going to talk a little bit on manage by the Greeks and at least dab into dabble into that a little bit and uh, talk about that topic. Next week's uh, webinar, I will be um, <clears throat> see because we had the day off Monday. So we did it today, Wednesday. I'm not sure if I'll do it Monday or Tuesday next week. At least that's what I'm thinking. And that'll be on the irons. We're going to go over iron butterflies and iron condors. Two good strategies for weekly, daily, weekly, or monthly uh, income, depending on the duration. But we'll, we'll dabble into that next week covering the irons. Um, but today will be more the... Uh, today, I'll touch on Managed by the Greeks and explain a, a little bit of that, dabble into it, uh, and go from there. So welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. And uh, let's jump in here. So before we jump into the strategy part, let me just get all the necessary screens up. Let's just talk about today. <clears throat> today... Um, tonight, you know, probably the biggest news uh, news day of the week. Uh, you have NVIDIA coming out tonight uh, with earnings. You have uh, the jobs uh, uh, farm, uh, jobs report tomorrow morning. And, um, and then you have the Fed minutes, I think, today, or they're review of the or, uh, of the Fed minutes, uh, notes of the Fed minutes from January. But the bottom line is everything will be, a, you know, a lot of these will be affected in tomorrow's opening price. So could there be a bit of a gap tomorrow? There could be, it could be a nothing burger, but, but uh, so tomorrow, so what's the point? Should you be, you know, take a shower and be ready to go in the morning? No, by the morning, it's too late. You need to do a fire drill. You need to look at your positions tonight uh, at the end of the day and make sure you can handle 30, 40 points up or down uh, if you have a range bound trade on. So tonight is the, you know, would be the prep night. Of, uh, so with that being said, for range bound trades, which is what we do a lot of, let me ask you a question. Weighing the potential risk it could be nothing tomorrow, but there are, you know, it would be like going in the ocean, going in the water or the lake and the lifeguard says, well, you know, he's got the yellow or warning sign, potential jellyfish and higher waves. Well, you can say, well, I really feel like swimming. Well, can't you wait till tomorrow from a risk factor? So the question is, you have to trade today for a range bound trade or tomorrow, which would be lesser risk for a range bound trader probably? Entering it today or wait till lunchtime or early afternoon tomorrow after all the NVIDIA news is into the market? Yeah, tomorrow, you know. So, so that's what I would do. But, so I'm gonna start out with a couple trades that I'm looking on, possibly putting on for live trades tomorrow uh, afternoon, depending on where the market is. Let's just say it's, you know, doesn't do much, but in the afternoon tomorrow. So the first trade, and then we'll get into, we'll kind of build into manage of the Greeks. Um, this I call a combo. I don't know how many of you have ever done this. How many of you have ever done something like this? It looks like looks like a Batman car. It looks like something exotic. But th this is where the underline is, 49.65. And because of VIX is 1580, the range of VIX for 2024 from January till now is about 12 and a half to 16. I mean, I think we hit 17 on a day in the last week or week and a half on a uh, during the day, but 
as far as the close, it would be 16. So with that in mind, we're in the high end of the range on the VIX. So we do a lot of these double strategies, maybe a double calendar, double diagonal, but when the VIX is maybe in the high end of the range, like it is right now, I might do a combo, which just kind of neutralizes my Vegas. So I'm putting a calendar on the downside. So I constructed this basically by going about 40 points. So the expiration is March 8th. So March 8th is 10 days, excuse me, 16 days from now. So the first trade I'm going to talk about that I would be entering tomorrow, and these would be the same expirations I would look at tomorrow, is this March 12, March 8th put calendar 40 points down from where we are. And you can see the logistics here. There's four days between the long and the short of the calendar. And how many of you know, how many of you are aware that this is taped? So you don't have to feverishly take pictures or write notes or whatever. This is recorded, right? But if you'd like to take notes and stay busy and do all those things, you can do that. You're more than welcome. Or you could just sit back and look at this stuff. So in this trade, that's the calendar. So I'm putting a put calendar 40 points below the market. And then on the upside, I'm placing my short of a butterfly about 40 points up at 5,000. And I'm making the width of the butterfly 35 wide, right? So I have a butterfly. So I have this 16-day trade on. This would be a combo. But when I put it on with this expiration tomorrow, it would be 15 days. And you can see it gives you a lot of room. In other words, this is the graph at expiration in 16 days today, 15 tomorrow. This is the graph today. So if we have a 30 or 40 or 50 point move, this it gives you a lot of room. So it's, you know, half a delta short. Here's your gamma. Here's your theta, positive theta trade. And then we're along a little bit of vega, but I would say it's pretty close to zero. The cost of this the, I try to get the calendar and the butterfly about the same cost. They're both about four bucks. So this is about an $800 trade. Any questions, not on the risk management yet, but on the logistics of what the heck I did. Yeah, I took the current price, went up about, about 40 points. We've moved a little bit, but 40, that's the goal from where I think we we're at 4960 when I looked at this earlier. So about 40 points up, 40 points down. All right, so this is a calendar 40 points out of the money, butterfly 40 points out of the money. So I put the flood. Yeah, I mean, I normally, <clears throat> question is why, why put the calendar on the downside and why put the fly on the upside, and they're both out of money. I mean, for me, you could go either way, but uh, calendar is a long Vega trade, meaning as the vol as the SPX goes down, volatilities go up, it'll benefit. So I have the calendar on the downside. On the upside, when the SPX goes down, volatilities, uh, excuse me, when the SPX goes up, volatilities go down, and so, uh, butterfly is a short Vega trade. It benefits if VIX goes down. So it goes with the natural flow of the market. Well, yeah, wh wherever we're at tomorrow, Randy, right? If we're, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for about 40 points up. If we're at 49.80 tomorrow or 49.30. And, and again, one other little key mark. If SPX is, when 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 I go look at the market tomorrow, when I'm looking to put this on in the afternoon after all the news is on, if we're much 
if we're up in SPX, 1.2% up or down, I'd probably back off. Because if, if SPX is up 1.2% or more, we're probably up around 50, 60 points, maybe more. That doesn't, that doesn't have a lot of in common with range-bound trading. Agree? So in other words, if there's a hurricane tomorrow and chickens are coming up, falling out the window, I'm not going to go in for it. If the market doesn't resemble range-bound in any way tomorrow, I wouldn't do it. All right. So, so this is a long vega. Here's the theta. That's one trade I do tomorrow. The other trade might be a 30-day butterfly. And I'll try to cut this off at 2.30. This is a butterfly. And I'm setting this up around at the money 49.70. And I would call this a 60.70. The, the lower number is just, you can see the short strike to the upper calls is 60. The short strike to the lower calls is 70. Whether you say 70, 60, or 60, 70, you have more risk on the downside, less on the upside. So in a typical 70, 60, you know, if I locked in prices around 16 bucks, you can see you've got on the downside, You've got, this is on a 70, 60, and this is a 30 days out call butterfly, broken wing butterfly. So on the downside, the risk is 1600 bucks. On the upside, the risk at expiration is 600. So you could see, now, let me ask you a question. What's the number one reason we do broken wing or unbalanced butterflies? This would be broken wing or unbalanced. A 70-70 would be balanced. What's the number one reason we do this, a broken wing? Yeah, to get the deltas. This is a symbol for deltas neutral. Now, one of the side benefits of it is 70-60. Would you say over the last 10 years, is a 70-60 pretty easy to manage and pretty palatable for the upside? Yeah, why? Well, it starts here, right? We only got $600 of risk on the upside. It's an easier to manage because it has almost three, two and a half, two and three quarters less risk on the upside and downs than downside. And it's pretty neutral. Now, <clears throat> So here we have a combo, which is a calendar and a butterfly. I'm spending for the combo. I'm spending four and four, eight hundred dollars. And I'll give you a couple of key principles for this managed by the Greeks. I'll get to that in a second. The fly has capital of 1600. The, just write these down for myself. First of all, and I'll get to definition in a second, but if you look at um, the combo, is 800, the fly is 600. The combo, the expiration is March 8th of the combo. And today that's 16 days. The fly, the expiration is March 22. Why do you think I use less capital on trade one versus trade two? Why do you think I use less capital on trade one than trade two? Why do you think? Anybody?
Yeah, as a trade gets closer to expiration, it's going to have more price risk. So I put less capital into it. That's the number one reason. Now, and I have two different durations. Um, the other th principle I want you to get is because as I go further out, I'm willing to do a little bit more capital. Uh, less price risk as we go further out. The other principle is I want you to get, get these pictures in your mind. This is the combo, kind of a Batman car, right? And this is a butterfly. And I want you to remember something. The butterfly is double the capital of the combo. Right? Everybody got that? Let me do it again. Here's the picture of the combo, Batman. Here's the picture of the butterfly. When I hit all the buttons together and look at the combined position, even though the butterfly is double the capital of the calendar, and together, this is just a 20, it's a $2,400 position. Um, I'm just going to put a note for myself. I want to address small traders at the end that how many know on a $4,900 vehicle like SPX, how many of you that are learning the business or maybe smaller traders realize you can do $200 range bound trades in SPX for learning? How many knew that? You can do calendars and flies for 200 bucks a piece. Yeah. Now, so the reason, right? Um, <clears throat> so we said, I'm going to put more capital in the further out expiration. And then what was the other point I was making? Um, And I will talk about that. Um, what was the point I was going to make? Um, yeah, that's smaller. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, so there's more price risk as you get further. I'm sure it'll come to me. Um, okay. Oh, I know. So when I combine the trades... Does this look more like the butterfly or the combo? What does this look like? The combo. You're saying, Dan, are you telling me that even it, even though the combo is half the capital of the butterfly, this graph looks totally like a combo? Yeah. So when you're managed by the Greeks, an important principle is when you have different durations, and I recommend different durations on a couple trades because you diversify your diversification, but the graph you're gonna see in the problem child, your, your colicky baby is gonna be the shorter duration. So the March, I have a March 22 and a March 8. This is gonna look like more the March 8th, right? now. What's the good and the bad and the ugly before I go backwards and define managed by the Greeks? We're positive theta traders. So on $2,400, right? Combination, we are bringing in theta of, theoretical theta of $43 a day. And that number increases, right? If you go, you know, if you go a week into this trade, our theta goes from 43 to 73. It really escalates. But when we start out with 43 theta, if you take your theta divided by your capital, 43 divided by 2,400, that's about 1.7, closer to 2% theoretical profit a day, right? So 
when I put this trade on, it's a 16 day and 30 day, but I'm looking to be in, you know, generally on trades, 20% of the duration, 20 to 20. So if this is a 16 day trade, I'll look to be in three or four days. If this is a 30 day fly, six or seven days. But as a general, uh, as a general principle. But so you see here, I'm really paying more attention to the combo. Now, if you look at them individually, this is the last thing I want to show you. If you look at the Greeks individually, here's the combo. A couple key points I just want to bring out. The combo costs $800 but it's bringing in theta of $30 a day. Whereas the butterfly, double the capital, it's a $1,600 trade, 12 theta. You see that? So to get to the combined, and you put the two trades together, to get to the 42, 43 theta, you can see the shorter term duration gives quite a bit of it. So when I'm managing this trade, I'm not managing, managed by the Greeks just means this. If you're a pilot in the cockpit, they have gate, I'm not a pilot, so please forgive me. Yes, there's a recording of this. Um, so a pilot in the cockpit has all these gauges, right? I've actually never been in the cockpit, but I've seen pictures of it, right? They have gauges and those gauges help a pilot. I would have, and if you're a pilot, please confirm. They help him fly the, the plane, right? They give him important measurements so he can make decisions. Well, managed by the Greeks means I'm using these delta and gamma. That refers to price risk, theta. This is talking about time decay, theta, and then vega, volatility risk. So these are your th three key things that I'm looking at and monitoring, right? So when we're, when we're, when VIX is in the upper end of the range over the last three weeks, excuse me, over the last six weeks, I want to be a little bit short vega, right? Uh, because if we're a little bit in the upper end of the range, I look for a version of the mean, I think we'll come home, down a little bit. Generally, we want to be a little bit short vega. We always want to be positive theta traders. We're, you know, we're range-bound traders. We're bringing in positive theta every day, like an insurance company collecting premiums. Generally, want to be pretty close to neutral, and gamma just tells you, simply what gamma is telling you, if, in this case, if SPX goes up or down 1% from where it's trading at, which is approximately 50 points, how do your deltas change, right? The closer your duration, the more your deltas will change. The further you go out, the less they'll change. In other words, in this in this uh, little illustration, this, when you're a range-bound trader and you're getting positive theta every day, we're going from neutral to a little long. When it goes up, you get short deltas. That's not good. When it goes down, you get long deltas, right? And you can see, if I look at the calendar butterfly by itself, this is the gamma, right? Minus 0.04. So you can see how the deltas change for 50 points up or down in the SPX. And then the butterfly has less gamma. As you go further out in time, minus 0.03, again, it just means that there's less of a change if we go up or down 1%. So now when I look at this, combined position, 
I'm managing this as one trade. You with me? I am managing this as, uh, as one trade, right? I'm looking at the graph. So, so what am I doing to make decisions? I'm looking, I'm looking at the graph. I'm looking at a visual. This is the expiration graph, right? And so when I have two trades with different expirations, the brokerage firm will put the March 8th. So I'm looking at March 8th expiration of the trade. But the first thing, how many people, the last they know, the visit to the doctor, how many of you have pretty good eyesight that you can see this graph? Yes or no? How many of you can see this graph well? Yes. All right, if you can't see the graph, that's a bit of a problem. Email me, you got a problem. But so this is an expiration. I'm not that concerned with this graph, right? My March 8th is what, 15 days or something from now? 16. I'm concerned with purple. Purple is, this is what the graph looks like tomorrow. And if we run it on tomorrow's date, 222, this is the graph tomorrow. So I can see as I move this graph, right? Forget the Greeks for now, just visual. Visual, and you can use a calculator, right? I look at this trade on tomorrow's date, and I want you to all think of something, right? We make money in the profitable area, but you can see here, this is a... $2,400 trade. So all of you can do this part. If we're currently here, right? Market's going down a bit. Let me just see if I need to recalibrate re these a little bit. Uh, I need to recalibrate these a little just because to keep them more in the middle. Let me see. Okay. What's my point? My point is, if this is this, on tomorrow's date, on a $2,400 trade, as a general practice, I don't want to be down much more than 5% before I might try to fix the trade or just check on its health and well-being, right? So what's 5% of 2,400? What's 5% of 2,400? Now, we'll get into exit in a second, but when I exit these trades, I don't exit all three on one trade. That would be disaster. Uh, I, I will show you at the end how I'll do that, boy. What's 5%? So risk management is saying a $2,400 trade, all right? And if we're here, I don't want to, want to be down more than $120, right? So do I have a little bit of room? Yes or no? Could I handle a 40-point move down probably tomorrow or a 50? Yeah. So somewhere around, you know, I would probably put an alert at 4,900, right? That can handle some heat on the downside. You with me? So again, you did that just by looking. How many feel they could do that part, right? Because again, let's forget managed by the Greeks for now. Let's say our profit is 10%, right? This is, well, we'll start it out easy. I'm looking to make 240 bucks. That's my overall objective of the trade. And let's say I don't want to lose much more. Let's say 12%. 12% of 2,400. It's about 290. How many are with me, even if you're a beginner? 
I think there's a good chance you're still with me. How many, just as we're looking at managing it, how many are with me still that are more, maybe that aren't in our community or this is new to them? This isn't, you know, we haven't got anything crazy yet, right? We're just saying, you know, you're putting up $2,400 on this entire combo and butterfly. And we're just saying, hey, I'm looking to make 240 bucks. I don't want to lose more than 290 But if I'm down 120 I'd want to fix the sucker somehow, right? Or try to fix it, right? So I put 4900 How about the upside? You know, and again, this is a theoretical graph, volatility, but this gives you an idea, right? On the upside, maybe 50-15. You see that? So I have a plan, right? 50-15. Now, what if we don't hit those things tomorrow? This is tomorrow's date. Let's say I'm assuming I'm putting on today, but you know, reality I'm putting on tomorrow. But if I go to like next Wednesday, the, the uh, 28th, did everybody see what, what happened when I put this ahead to next Wednesday? What happened? The purple graph, theoretical profits. So it's showing for a wide area 170 to 200 to 300 to 250 to 200. So by next Wednesday, is there a pretty good chance if we're in this range that we could get the profit? Well, and, and yeah, depending, yeah. And, and if volatility stays the same or goes down, um, we could, right? And as we start getting to the tail end of the curves, you know, the break-evens, that's where we'll want to do something. But but that's kind of our projection. So I'm looking, so what, what did we go over already? I might have to, to, to do part two uh, next week and maybe delay the iron condors. We'll see, because I wanted to just, I do want to explain some of these things, but so you can see here that in this trade, we get a lot of room. And the other thing I want to talk about is real quick, we said we want to be out of this by next Wednesday. How many days is next Wednesday? Next, what's the date next Wednesday? Oh, 28, right? Of course. Next Wednesday is 28. But even if we go to the 27th, which would be Tuesday, right? Can we still get in the 200s, right? Can we still get a chance in the 200s or close to 10%? Yes. But what I'm saying, what, what I want to get at is, okay, for six days till next Tuesday, what is the expected move? How many of you know, how many of you, yes, I understand expected move conversation. No, I don't. It says 75 points. Yes or no, I understand. What it means in English, Spanish, and Somalian is this. Think back to school, which I was never good at. Standard deviation. So they're saying there's a 68% chance where, where we are now. Let's say 49.50. There's a 68% chance over the next six days. SPX is going to be between 48.75, down 75, and 5,025. 68% probability will be between here. If that's the case, without doing any adjustments, are we pretty good here? Between 48.75 and 50, 
So it's saying there's a 68% probability without even stinking any adjustments, we're going to stay in the profitable area, right? All right, I think what I'll do is, is maybe this was kind of maybe an intro. I think what I'll do is spend next week or half of next week doing a little more on Managed by the Greeks, and then we'll get into the irons. Um, keep tabs on our, our website. We do have a couple classes coming up. I will be doing a once a week class on Managed by the Greeks starting next week, and then I think the week after, I might be doing something on irons. So you can you can if you if you want to keep abreast of that you can, but anyways, um, oh yeah, and you can see as 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 Jim says if you look at it's the combo in six days on Feb twenty seven that's bringing in you know, maybe $140, the butterfly, because it's further duration, in seven days, you see that? It's bringing in about a third of the capital of the combo. But again, you can't have your cake and eat it too. As you get shorter duration, you get more theta, but if there's a price move, it can hurt you more. So anyways, thanks for coming in here, folks. We'll, we'll, we'll build on this next week with Managed by the Greeks. And uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do one more week of Managed by the Greeks, and then I'll get into the irons. But uh, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a nice day.